Hello everyone, welcome to Anthropology Analytica. I'm Dr. Arjun Bopanna, your Anthropology faculty at Insights IAS. In today's video, let's try to understand the concept of tributary mode of production. So before we go into the tributary mode of production, let's try to understand this idea of modes of production. See, we have in our syllabus, the different modes of exchange or distribution, right? So the different modes of distribution, or exchange, right? So we have uh, uh, the uh, reciprocity, redistribution, and your uh, market exchange, right? So here the idea is about the different modes of production. See, economy or economic anthropology basically deals with production, distribution, and consumption of goods and services. So here, let's try to understand the different modes of production and focusing specifically on tributary mode of production. So Eric Wolf identifies three distinct modes of production in human society. I'll repeat again, Eric Wolf identifies three distinct modes of production in human society. So he categorized them as one domestic modes of production or kin ordered. Okay, so domestic mode of production or kin ordered production, tributary form of production. And third one is what we see in today's modern society, the capitalistic form of production. See in domestic or kin ordered production, the work is organized on the basis of family. Okay, on the basis of family relationship and does not necessarily involve formal social denomination and control. Okay, so there is no formal uh, structure uh, and uh, the power is not concentrated in one single person. Uh, so it is what the family that regulates the production. It is the family that regulates the production. While in tributary mode of production, the primary producer, so producer has to pay a tribute as a name itself uh, suggests. So the producer has to pay a tribute. The rest of the production is kept with himself. Okay, so the tribute has to be paid in the form of material goods or it can be in a labor to another individual or it can be for a group of individual who control the production in the, uh, you know, somebody who controls the production somebody who controls the production, like uh, it could be either political control or it could be religious control or it could be through military force. So through using these and group or an individual controls the production and therefore the person who is producing this goods or service has to pay a tribute. Okay, so this is tributary modes of production. Then we have capitalistic mode of production, which is centered around three features. One, private ownership, private ownership of means of production. Second, the workers sell their labor power to capitalists in order to survive. Labor is sold. And third one, surpluses of wealth are produced and these surpluses are either kept as profit or reinvested in production. So profit and investments. So this is the feature of capitalistic form of production. So private uh, ownership of means of production. Second, labor is sold. Okay. And for, uh, sold for survival and profit is either stored or it is reinvested in the production in order to generate further surplus. Now, in this, let us try to understand and discuss the tributary. So in most of the pre, uh, uh, you know, uh, pre-industrialized or pre-capitalistic society, we either see domestic or tributary form of society. So in our simple society, what type of production we see is domestic and tributary. Mainly banned society, may we see domestic or mode of production and in tribal society in chiefdom okay we see tributary especially in the chiefdom and state societies 
okay we see tributary form and even in tribal some of the societies may we see tributary but mainly tributary is a characteristic of chiefdom and state of pre-capitalistic or pre-industrial society now coming to the tributary modes of production once again so where do we see it so tributary mode of uh, production is found in social systems which divides classes of rulers uh, rulers and subjects so there should be division in the society there should be division in the society so that's why i told you it is mainly seen among the chiefdom or in the state society okay chiefdom or state society so once again i'll repeat what is tributary mode of production so the primary producers has to pay a tribute so producer has to pay tribute okay to individuals or group individuals or groups uh, so it could be a chief it could be a king etc so chief uh, could uh, achieve this status either through religious or political uh, the king can achieve this either through political or military force etc okay so the rulers of most of the tributary system is determined either through descent or through military or through political service so as i told you the rulers or for whom you have to pay the tribute is decided on the basis of descent okay military or political service uh, political services okay so the subjects uh, who these rulers are going to rule uh, are farmers or herders if it is a pastoral society it could be herders if it is an agrarian or horticulture it could be the farmers so they produce for themselves and their families but at the same time a proportion of it of goods or labor has to be given to the ruler in the form of tribute okay so the production is uh, uh, you know uh, produced i mean the workers typically own their means of production okay the workers typically own their means of production the workers also retain control over the goods they produce okay uh, over here they completely own their goods but a part of it has to be given as tribute second they also own the means of production so workers retain the control over the goods they produce they control their own labor okay and they also decide when and uh, when not to work okay and another important feature of tributary mode of production is that the workers cannot be separated from the means of production the workers cannot be divided uh, separated from the means of production that means they own their land or they have free access to hunting and foraging grounds so that is what so workers are cannot be separated from the means of production that means they are part of their own land they are part of their economic activity you cannot remove them from their economic activities workers control uh, their entire goods that they produce and also have control over their labor and decide when and when not to work so these are the features of the tributary mode of production and tributary mode of production is characteristics of characteristic of pre-capitalistic and pre-industrial state level societies that were found in europe asia africa and americas and if you take some examples like for historically the feudal european society the medieval japan japanese society the incan empire the imperial china all these societies showed tributary mode of production even in india tribal society which is having chiefdom also showed tributary mode of production so this is one of the mode of production that we see in society i hope this idea of different types of production specifically tributary mode of production is clear to all of you so in the next video we shall discuss how human adapts to high altitude so the question is human adaptation to high altitude okay so it's a 15 marker question so we shall discuss this in our next video thank you for watching